up YouTube it's Blackwing2040 and I know I've been gone for a very very long time because <laughs> I did like so many live streams of com of live comic book readings and I thank you guys so much for those who attended those live streams and for those who haven't who weren't attending actually watch them and thank you guys so much for liking them just so you know the live stream the live reads are I see that you guys enjoy them so much so thing is I'm only gonna be doing those when they I don't I don't want it to inter I don't want my live streams to interfere with what you guys do in your daily lives all right so to make it per perfect to make it easy for everyone I'm gonna be doing those whenever I know most I know you guys who are in school, you guys have days off and, you know, breaks and everything. So that's the only time I'm going to be doing those live streams when you guys have breaks. That's it sounds fair to you. And it, I feel like that's the best solution. But anyway, I haven't done a top 10 in a long time. So let's get this top 10 train moving. And our top, this top 10 we'll be covering is... <clears throat> Top 10 Superman villains. I did a top 10 Batman villains, ten, top 10 Spider-Man villains. So let's do Superman because, you know, Superman's the very first superhero ever created, you know. So let's get started, shall we, with number 10. Number 10 is Toy Man. Now, I'm going to say this, guys. Before I get into the top 10, most of these villains I never really found. Only pretty much the super villain I knew so much about for Superman was, you know, Lex Luthor, because you know he's Superman's arch nemesis and everything. And a little and and Mongo, because I used to watch the Justice League TV show when I was a kid, and it was awesome. I also hated Mongo a lot. But anyway, Toy Man, I first encountered in the Superman the animated series, and I know in that show they really made him look like an actual toy. I know he's a real considered a real threat, because I know he was also in um. The Supergirl, Supergirl TV show, the small, the small though. He was also in Smallville. He's a cra he's a crazy maniac, and everything in his arsenal is pretty much toys and toy, but not just any toys. There are special kind of toys that just you know are made for destruction. He he, he walk he roams around in like a, a giant toy tin soldier, giant robot attacks the city and everything. But he's, I wouldn't consider him that much of a threat because he's so, such an easy target to put down. But don't let that fool you because he also has some other tricks up his sleeve. But still, Toy Man, number 10. Number 9, Mongol. I hate this guy. I hate this guy so, so much. The reason why, <laughs> the reason why I hate Mongol so much is because if you guys remember the episode from Justice League, um, the episode titled War World, that was the first time I ever saw Mongol. And that... When, you know when you're a kid, you always want the superhero to win. And when Superman was fighting Mongol, he was getting beat down so many times over and over and over. I was like, why is Superman losing to this guy? <laughs> that made me hate Mongol so much. And I know I, I was, I mean, to me, that's why I hated Mongol because I was a kid. But now he's really considered a real threat because he's not only a Superman villain, he's also a Green Lantern villain as well. But still mostly Superman. And, of course, you know, he has those Black Mercy plants that he attached. And what they do, they attach to a, to a human, to any per, any um, life form. And it gives them their deepest and happiest dreams in their minds. But it's also like a parasite stucking onto you, eating you from the inside out. It's an ugly looking thing. So, Mongol, number nine. Number eight, Bizarro! I had no idea who he was the first time I actually looked at him. I All I saw when I just looked at him, he was just like, who is this guy? And why is he wearing a Superman Superman costume? And I'm like, okay, so Bizarro is just Superman backward. He's Superman, but backwards. Everything he thinks, everything that's evil is good to him. So everything that's good is evil to him. So pretty much everything is backwards to him. And he tries his best to be a hero from time to time, and his powers are also reversed. Instead of heat, instead of heat vision, he has freeze vision. Instead of um, freeze breath, he has heat breath. And instead of like super breath, where Superman could blow strong winds, his breath is vacuum 
breath. So everything for him is reverse from Superman. And plus, he's a really cool character. He's his tone is he speaks backwards, saying and speaks in first person. Me am Bizarro. Me am here to help you. And when he means by help, he means destroy. So he's a really cool character. I loved him in Superman the animated series. He's one. And I just love his, I love his costume and I love his character. So Bizarro, number eight, number seven, Lobo. You mess with the main man, you mess with me. That was a bit, that was a really bad Lobo impression. I tried. But anyway, Lobo is one of the coolest Superman villains ever around. I loved him in Superman the Animated Series. I know he had one appearance in Young Justice, <laughs> and he really put up a good fight against Wonder Girl and Batgirl in that show. But Lobo, oh my gosh, his history is crazy. I can't believe I can't believe he of all people like killed his entire race, and he's the last person of his kind. To me, that's kind of br that is brutal. Like you would kill your entire race. And then you just become the biggest bounty hunter in the galaxy. And not only that, he has probably one of the coolest bikes around. That that b space bike that he has, that is just, that thing is awesome. But <laughs> he's he's just hilarious. He sometimes he takes the sometimes he may treat things as being a hero. Sometimes he's a villain. Most of the time he's an anti-hero. He's in between. But Lobo, he's a really really cool character. And I would, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing like a movie of him someday. I wouldn't mind that. But anyway, Lobo, number seven. Number six, Metallo, one of Superman's most deadliest enemies. Once you, once Superman gets into a battle with this guy, as soon as he, ap, um, it, um, starts up his kryptonite heart, he already knows he has the upper hand against Superman. And plus... He's like one of the only, only Superman um villains who act, actually can try to take him down, cause you know Kryptonite Heart and everything, and plus Lex actually gave him multiple versions of Kryptonite. His now he's filled with Red Kryptonite, Blue Kryptonite, Gold Kryptonite. Yes, there are multiple different kinds of Kryptonite guys, and I know there's some. There are other YouTube videos out there that could tell you what they are. I'm not the one that you know supply that for you, but trust me. Metallo is a threat to Superman, well, a threat to all Kryptonians in general, because once you start picking a fight with him, you're in for a losing streak, because once that Kryptonite kicks in, you're done for. So, Met Metallo, sorry about that, Metallo, number six. All right, number five, General Zod. Oh my gosh, this guy is a th I consider, I think this guy is like probably the hit, I would consider him the Hitler of all Kryptonians. This guy just wants everything or any person to kneel before him just to kneel before Zod. He's just a threat. I consider him a huge Kryptonian threat and especially with his um partners Ursa and Nan, Zod is considered a threat to all Kryptonian society. And no matter how many times Superman tries to bring him down, he always comes back wanting revenge because you know I know this happened in the Superman movies, Jor-El was the one who imprisoned him, and I think they also made this clear in the comics as well. But yeah, Zod, he doesn't mess around, he wants everyone to kneel down before him, and he won't stop until an entire nation is kneeling before him. Because that's all he wants, he wants to be, he wants to be ruler, that's, that's all he wants. And of course, he puts up a good fight against Superman, because you know, they're both Kryptonians, they're both equally matched, and... It could be like a never-ending decisive battle with those two. And unless you're talking about Man of Steel, where Superman snapped his neck. <laughs> Man, that was brutal, but I say he had a good reason to do that. Trust me. I know most people didn't like that, but to me, I think he had a real good reason to. But anyway, General Zod, number five. All right, number four, Dark Side. And I know what you're thinking. Why have the greatest villain in DC history, number four? Trust me, there are other villains who are other who have done worse things to Superman a lot. But I had to put Darkseid at number four because there are other villains out there in Superman's Rogues Gallery, and you guys know I'm pretty sure you guys already know who number one is gonna be. But anyway, Darkseid is considered one of the most powerful villains in the DC universe. He's been 
He's been a Superman villain. He's been a Justice League villain. He's been he's a villain. He's a villain all around. And I think one thing that he's done that hurt Superman the most was in Superman the animated series. Is where he killed um Dan Turpin. I was like, oh my gosh, Superman! And he was pissed off Superman so hard. Superman just really wanted to kill him. And in the final, in the finale of um, Superman the Animated Series, where Superman went to Apocalypse and faced Darkseid, he put up, put up a really, really good fight. And when Superman actually defeated him, and all of um, Darkseid's servants um, gathered around him, and Superman was said, you're, you're all free to go. But Darkseid was like, here, I am God. So, no matter... Just if you see Dark Side, run for your life because once he shoots those Omega beams, you're done for. So Dark Side number four, number three, Brainiac. I consider Brainiac and Dark Side on the same level as OP DC villains, as one of the most powerful, if I would say, because I know Dark Side and Brainiac teamed up in Justice League once. And then Brainiac actually fused with Lex Luthor, and you guys remember that um epi those episodes from um Justice League Unlimited, the Cadmus arc. That was probably one of the coolest arcs ever in Justice League. That arc was so epic. And then to later be recognized, he only ap appeared a little bit in Justice League Unlimited as a little cameo, but in the finale of Justice League Unlimited. His components were fused onto Darkseid, so Darkseid pretty much was resurrected with Brainiac components. So I guess that made Darkseid extra powerful. But Brainiac, on the other hand, he just wants to know the knowledge of the multiverse just by um, kidnapping um, cit cities and bottle bottling them up in his skull ship, which is pretty dope looking, by the way. It's just he's a definitely he's definitely a threat. Um, to be a force to be reckoned with and Superman has taken him off many many times and he has multiple versions of himself So no matter how many times you take him down He keeps coming back more power. I would say more powerful, but more smarter if I would say But you know the Justice League have, Justice League and Superman have taken him down many times. So Brainiac number three number two Doomsday the one the one villain that was able to do something that no one else could kill Superman and I know you guys I know you guys have heard the story of the death of Superman many many times I don't think I need to explain it to you guys but I, I watched the movie I read the comic and boy Doomsday really gave Superman a total beat down just everywhere that match went it was just crazy like Doomsday Man, especially seeing him in um for the first time in live action in Batman v Superman. Oh my gosh, that final battle was so epic. It was like just beyond. It was just like on a grand scale. It was just epic. And I know what Doom Doomsday's main pur main purpose is is just to destroy anything, anything, it, just anything, anything he sees. It's done for. And the thing is, the way if you kill Doomsday, he comes back again, but you can't kill him the same method that you did the last time. So that's what makes him even more indestructible. So he's a for he's like a force that cannot be contained. He's just he's an unstoppable force right there. And oh my gosh. Just that was Doomsday. Number two, he's just mmm unstoppable now before i get to um my number one i have some honorable mentions i have to say so the first honorable mention goes to livewire she was first created in superman the animated series and i love the dc animated universe by the way for create you know for creating villains like Har if it wasn't for the dc animated universe we never would have gotten harley quinn or livewire for that matter and plus i love that new batman adventure um, Batman Adventures episode where Livewire teamed up with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. That was a that was an awesome episode, by the way. That was just awesome. And of course, we have Livewire in the Supergirl TV show, and she is awesome, by the way. That was she's awesome in that show. So that's one honorable mention. Next honorable mention is Silver Banshee. I feel like she's one of those villains that don't really get that much recognition, or no one really cares about her. But um, 
she got some recognition in the Supergirl TV show. She's been in um that movie Superman Batman on Public Enemies for a little bit. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm telling you, she's there's a lot of villains in the DC universe that really don't get that much recognition and I it just it, bu it bugs me a lot, but she gets an honorable mention as well. Next honorable mention is Mr. Mix Yespitlik. The one villain whose name is hard to pronounce. And the only one... <laughs> He's just like Batmite. But, you know, Batmite's just a huge fan of Batman who's from the ninth dimension. Mr. Mix... Mix your spit lick. Um, he's just... He's just there to annoy Superman. And the only way you could send him back to his dimension is you have to say his name... You have to get him to say his name backwards three times. And the way you pronounce it is Kalkizem. That's exactly how it's, I know. His, it's hard to pronounce his name um, regular, and it's hard to pronounce backwards. I'm like, jeez. Whoever created that um, that character made a hard name to pronounce. But yeah, that gets he gets an honorable mention. Next honorable mention goes to Imperiex. And most people know Imperiex from the Legion of Superheroes TV show, but he also played a major role in the Superman storyline our world at war. I didn't read it yet, but he played a huge role in that story arc. And he's one of he's a really, really cool villain, by the way. I wanted to put him on this list, but there were so many, so at least he gets an honorable mention. And the last honorable mention goes to Mercy Graves. I think she was another character created for the DC animated universe. I know most of you guys know her as Super I mean not Superman. Lex Luthor's chauffeur. And I mean she has done some villainy, but uh, she, I mean, if she works with Lex, you know, she's still considered evil, by the way. So, yeah, Mercy Graves gets another honorable mention. And for the number one Superman villain on my list, drum roll, please. I know you guys already know who it is. Lex Luthor, the pain, the thorn in Superman's side, the one person who wants to be Superman. He hates Superman to the bone. And... <laughs> Let's just say he has a love for Kryptonite, and he cannot stand Superman. At they both can't stand each other, regardless. But one thing I found interesting is, now that DC Rebirth is going on, they actually made <clears throat> they made Lake, um, Lex Luthor have his own Superman costume. And he's wearing the House of L on his chest. The first time I saw that, I was like, what is Lex doing wearing that S? He does not deserve that S. But apparently, by the what things he's doing in um in DC Rebirth, uh, I say he deserves it. I mean, he always wanted to be treated as a hero because he's always been jealous of Superman. He've always he always wanted recognition to be recognized as the greatest man in the universe. He hates aliens, but now look at look at him. He's actually being a hero in DC Rebirth and. He's getting the recognition that he's always wanted to be, you know, a hero, to be Superman. And look at him now. So, but yeah, Lex has done so many crazy things in Superman in Superman's life. Well, not his life, but as a villain, you know. He fused with Brainiac. He's, uh, he's helped out Brainiac many a times. He became an orange lantern and then drove him crazy. And, uh, He's done a lot of things, and of course, you know, he's Superman's arch nemesis, so what are you going to do? But anyway, that's my list of top 10 Superman villains. In the comment section below, what are your top 10 favorite um Superman villains? And that's what all I have for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this top 10. I know it's been a long time since, it's done, since I've done a video, but I'm going to be coming very busy again, you know, with school starting back again in, a, in two weeks. So... I'll try to do the best I can, and the same thing with live streams, I'll only be doing those when I have breaks, like everyone else, and of course, I enjoy doing this stuff for you guys, and I'm glad you guys enjoy watching my videos, so thank you guys so much, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and until then, I'm Vengeance, I'm Darkness, I am Blackwing, stay golden guys.